All right, guys, I've got questions that need answers, and I'm excited about this. We're going to do an experiment. And if this proves out, this may change all of air layering in the garden. We're going for the Nobel Prize. But first, we've got to get some education. in session and so that you guys understand exactly what I'm trying to do here we're gonna cover some basics of how plants work or at least most plants so just under the bark of a tree there's different layers which you guys are probably aware of and the biggest one we talk about is the cambium because that's the layer where all the actively dividing cells are that can then create roots or can create just different structures for that tree so we've got the bark, which is the outer layer, the protection for the tree. We've got the xylem, which is a layer in the tree that transports nutrients and minerals, water, things like that, up to the leaves so that they can grow. Then we've got the cambium, which is the actively dividing cell layer, which we already know about, and that contains all the undifferentiated cells that can just turn into the different components that the tree needs, like roots or leaves or xylem or phloem or anything like that. Then we've got the phloem, which is used to transport carbohydrates down to the roots. So the leaves use photosynthesis and make sugars, and then the phloem transports all those sugars down to the roots. The rest is history. All right, so the bark is the outer layer. Next comes the phloem, just underneath the bark. Then comes the cambium, and then comes the xylem. So the cambium layer is between the xylem and phloem, and like I said, it's all the actively dividing cells, so it can continually make more xylem and phloem, which can go on to support the tree's efforts in growing. All right, so now that we got all the basics out of the way, let's talk about layering. So when we layer a plant, basically what we're doing, and I know this is a tree, assume it's a branch just for a moment. Basically what we're doing is we're getting rid of, we're cutting away all of these layers except for the xylem. Now, what that does is it cuts off the plant's ability, the cambium, the phloem, it cuts off those guys and the bark, it cuts its ability off for the phloem to bring nutrients down to the roots from just that branch that you girdled or cut all the tissue off. However, we're leaving the xylem intact. So water and minerals, nutrients can go back up to that branch that you want to keep alive. So the rest of the plant is still alive and still has phloem intact and cambium and still bringing nutrients down to the roots. But for that one particular branch that you're doing a layer on, it's not bringing those nutrients back through that point. What it's doing, the, the phloem is still intact up here and the cambium and all that. But what it's doing is as it's making nutrients, it's bringing them down and then boom, it stopped right there. And then all of that cambium in there and the, the buildup of the carbohydrates from the phloem can just create a soupy mess of just beautiful nutrients and cells that are gonna start forming all kinds of callus in that area. And then it can start forming roots because it's the branch is saying, hey, I'm severed. It thinks it is anyway. It's still getting some support from the xylem, but it thinks it's severed and all those nutrients are stopping right there. And they're going, hey, we need to form roots or this branch is gonna be dead. So then if you've done everything right, this branch will begin forming all kinds of roots out around this new site where you cut off the flow of nutrients going downward and then you can cut your branch off right here and take all the roots with it plant it create a whole new tree now having covered all that this is where things get interesting for me and i want to explain a topic that isn't explained very often don't worry this is going somewhere guys but i want you to understand what i'm trying to do here so we're going to talk about layering Okay, so we hear people talking about air layering all the time. And don't worry, I've got a point here. I'm bringing this all to a head, guys. But layering is actually a broad topic. It covers more than just air layering. And some of you may know that, some of you may not. But these are the main types of layering that I'm familiar with and have tried in the past. So there's just basically layering, where you take a branch that might be low growing, close to the ground, and you just tuck it down under the ground, and it begins to form roots after a year, or however long it takes for that plant. 
and then you've got serpentine layering. If you've got a long branch and it's close to the ground, you can go multiple times and it'll form roots down there into the soil. Then you can cut here and here and have multiple plants from that one branch, that one serpentine layer. Then you've got stooling. A lot of times people will do this with uh, like rootstock or you know you could do it with wygella or lots of different plants that have tons of growth coming up close to the soil but you need to give a little bit more soil to form those roots so some plants like I said like wygella you can go to all those multiple branches coming up and then put another layer of soil maybe six inches to a foot up above all those branches and all those branches will start forming roots. Then you're not having to worry about layering in this method where you have to dig or dip it underneath the ground. You just pile up the soil and roots will form. Then you can dig down through that soil and cut all of these branches away and they'll each become their own plant. So that's called stooling. Then you've got tip layering and this is done with like blackberries or a lot of berry plants. You can take the tip and just bend it over, put it, just stuff it right into the ground and it'll form roots right out of the tip of that plant. And then you cut it off and you got a whole new plant. And that brings us to air layering. And I put a little red star by it because that's the one everybody loves to talk about. And rightfully so, because air layering is fun. You can do air layering on trees where you can't get branches down to the ground. But it's basically the same principle as all of these. And that is where it gets very interesting. And I want this experiment to go. And here it is. And I'm going to keep this real simple because it is. When you're taught how to layer a plant in this method or this method or this method, they don't teach you anything about cutting the bark the cambium, the phloem, those layers away from the plant, which is basically girdling. They don't teach you to cut all that away, to girdle the plant, and then dip it under the soil. They teach you to just dip it under the soil, maybe rub a little rooting hormone on it. Sometimes, especially with rhododendrons, for some reason, you know, I don't know, maybe it's because they're harder to root, they'll teach you to actually take the branch, say this is a branch right here, and cut into it. Say this is the top of the the top of the branch here. They'll teach you to cut into it at an angle upward towards the top. So you're not actually removing any bark. You're just cutting in at an angle and it cuts the flow of that uh, the flow of the nutrients going down right about halfway through that branch. And what that does is it causes all of those nutrients and hormones to pool right at this little crevice right here, and then rooting can form beyond that. And that's what they teach you with this type of layering with rhododendrons. So you could basically do the same idea here with any plant, and you'll probably get better rooting percentages than if you were to just tuck the branch under the soil without severing that and putting a little rooting hormone on it. So my question is this, if in basic layering, where you're stuffing the branch under the soil, you're taught to just either do nothing or sever a part of the branch, but leave the rest of the bark intact, why do we do that with air layering? That's the question, guys. That's the big question. And here's why I'm asking it. I have a particular rhododendron on my property that I cannot get to root through traditional methods, like taking cuttings. I'm sh someday it's gonna happen, but so far I've not been successful. So what did I do? I tried air layering it. And in air layering it, I girdled each little branch that I air layered. I completely cut away all those layers except for the xylem so that I could get the thing to start rooting. But every time I do that on that particular rhododendron, or on any rhododendron, the top above where the girdling happened starts to look weak and starts yellowing and it just doesn't look as healthy. So I want to do this experiment and we're going to do it with figs because figs tend to root pretty easily and this is going to tell us one way or another, I believe, whether this will work or not. But if we're taught to layer this way where we just make a slice through the branch but we leave some of the bark and all of the, all of the structure of the bark and the phloem and all of that and the cambium intact, 
Why can't we do that with air layering? Why won't the same exact thing do with air layering? And the advantage to doing that would be that the plant still has enough bark and material on there to transfer nutrients back and forth very easily without a problem. Because my question is, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and girdling the whole branch when I air layer, why does the top of the branch still look unhealthy? Is there a, am I cutting all the xylem away? I don't think so. Is there a certain distance the xylem extends into the plant? And am I cutting so much of it away that it can't get nutrients up to the top? Is it that the further into the plant you go, the less useful the xylem becomes? And so I'm not getting enough to really maintain the top of that branch? I don't know. I've got lots of questions, guys. But we're going to find out, I think, with these figs. And what we're going to do is we're going to try traditional layering on an air layer. Let's get started. All right, so let's get down to it. So we're actually gonna go after this Black Madeira KK and this particular tree, I actually got directly from KK. So I'm looking at it and I think I wanna take this branch right here as an air layer. And so we're gonna get this prepared. First thing I'm gonna need to do is tie this up. All right, so there it is. I tied some sisal twine around the trunk there and that branch and now it's pretty sturdy. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this prepared for our air layer. So the first thing we need to do is we need to cut some of these leaves off here and that little fig is gonna to have to go, but we need to cut these leaves off and then we need to actually make the cut in an area where there is a node, just like here or here or here, because that's where the highest concentration of undifferentiated cells lies that can then become roots. And so I'm gonna get these branch or these leaves taken off this fig so that we can see what we're working with. All right, so I've cleared away quite a bit of material, all those leaves and that fig. And what I'm gonna do is put this cup, I've already cut it out. This is just a deli cup that I get a, at a local restaurant supply store. Cut a hole in the bottom there and then cut a slit all the way up the side of that cup so that we can slide that branch right up through the center here. Then I've got some lids for these deli cups. I put a hole in the top and a slit through that so that we can cap it off when we're done. So I'm gonna get this in place and show you what it looks like. So I've cut away the leaves and I've put my cup in place to see kind of where it's gonna rest and which bud I want to actually start working with. So what I'm gonna do is right down below this bud in the middle of the cup here, I don't want to slice into it. I was thinking about doing that, but I think it'll make this too weak and it might want to flop over. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cut, just like you would girdle an air layer normally, I'm going to cut away about half of the bark, but leave the backside here so that it can flow plenty of nutrients back and forth and everything can keep supporting this branch here, but leave some area where I've cut the bark simulating a basic layer that you would put into the ground. So by doing that scraping, we're just scraping away all the layer of phloem and cambium so that it can't transport nutrients. We want all the nutrients to stop right here. All the nutrients that are flowing down this way, the sugars and carbohydrates, to stop right there so that roots can start forming out of this area. But I'm leaving the backside intact so that minerals and water and nutrients can flow up to the leaves and support it better than I've seen in the past. If this works, we're gonna be doing rhododendrons and just all kinds of plants this way. And obviously the hope is that this doesn't start callousing over and then not wanna create roots because it does have a path to travel here. Like I said, it works with basic layering in the ground. I don't know why we don't do it for air layering. We're gonna find out. All right, so I moistened this branch a little. I'm just gonna put a little bit of rooting hormone just right up into that area where the cambium is ending.
interested in wrapping this up airtight. I want a little bit of airflow to get through there and be able to put some water down in there. So I don't want to seal this up too well with uh, any saran wrap or plastic or anything like that. You can do that. I've done it in the past. But for this particular project, I don't want to do that. So we're just going to wrap it up with some electrical tape in areas just to hold this thing together. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is just place a block of wood under this just to support that a lot better and uh, ensure that this branch doesn't break off. And then finally, I'm just going to pack more bark in through this little hole in the top here because I want to ensure that that's packed tightly around that area where the rooting hormone is so that we got good root development, you know, good soil contact with the, with the branch and we'll get good root development there. So there it is, our beautiful air layer. It's all tight and tucked away and it's got some support there. I'm gonna just put this right back out in the sun. We'll watch what happens. Now, normally you wouldn't wanna put, you know, propagation experiments or totes out in the sun. The sun is gonna let some heat in through this plastic and it's gonna warm up in here, but that's okay. I've got it open, you know, this thing isn't completely wrapped and so it's gonna be able to vent some heat. The other thing is the heat in there is where we want it. We've got the tops cool and we've got the bottoms warm. So hopefully it will help encourage root development. So like I said, I'm gonna go put this out in the sun where it was before and we're gonna come back and show you guys what's happened. We're either gonna learn a lot or a little. Well, either way, I think we're gonna learn a lot, but. But uh, I'm excited to see how this works. All right, so it's September 19th and about six weeks have gone by since we started those air layers on the figs. And I wanna go take a look at them now and show you what I've been looking at. Here it is, and like I said, it was later in the season but we've proved our theory. It's not full of roots because it was August 5th when we did this guy, but it's enough roots to prove my theory. I only removed half the bark on this guy and it still began growing its own roots, but still had enough bark attached to maintain a good flow of nutrients, water and nutrients, both directions, so that the top of the plant is perfectly beautiful and healthy and didn't lose anything in the process. So I think I'm going to try this method out in my landscape on certain varieties of rhododendrons that I have a hard time with and see if it doesn't work a little bit better. You guys want a little closer shot of those roots that did actually form? There they are. And they're growing nice. Like I said, wish I had a couple more months of summer. We got them coming around the top here too. Wish I had a few more months of summer, but uh, it's just not gonna happen. We're uh, past the middle of September here and temperatures are starting to get cooler. But next spring, I'm sure this guy's gonna take off and I absolutely love it. Now I know this is a long one, but if you guys have made it this far in the video, hit the like button first of all, because you guys are awesome. But second of all, I got something to show you. So I originally wasn't gonna put this in the video because it was a part of the experiment I'm showing you throughout this video, but it really kind of turned into nothing. And so I thought, you know, in an effort to try and bring these videos down to a more manageable, watchable time frame, because that's what people are telling me they want, I'm trying to just give you the valuable information. And so I was going to completely cut this out because I thought it really kind of went to nothing and meant nothing. Then I started thinking about it and I thought, you know what, this isn't, this is not invaluable information because it will at least show people that this way won't work and so I went back out one last time and looked at this fig where I did something similar but a little bit different and I was pleasantly surprised. You guys want to go take a look? All right so this is the fig that I did the air layer with that I showed you and it's actually about a week maybe two weeks since I filmed that last little clip and I've meant to get this up for you guys but I haven't yet but so there's the roots that started developing on this guy there were some roots over here on the top and I just noticed some more uh oh we're going upside down a little guy right there see it anyway there's roots in there probably all throughout there just not a ton getting to the edge yet because it's later in the season and it's just getting cooler around here and leaves and in, in fact leaves are starting to fall off these guys but I did one other experiment while I did this and I hadn't shown it yet but here it is I actually did another air layer at the same time as this other one here. 
but I did something different. This was more for myself than anything. Now with this one, I cut off half the bark. I left the other half. With this one, I thought, well, what if I don't cut any bark off? What if I just make some slits? I just took the knife and I just slit right down the stem of it in several places. I didn't remove any bark, just made some slits to open up that cambium a little bit more so it would grow roots easier. And I thought, what if that's all you have to do and the thing will root? Because everybody spent all this time cutting all the bark away and then the top of the plant doesn't get the nutrients it needs so it suffers a little bit until it roots and can fully recover. Well now, I checked on this thing at the same time that I checked this in that last clip and showed you and it still didn't have roots. We're getting later in the season. But I came out the other day and look at what I found, guys. Look at this. Look at this. Brand new. You see them little guys? Boom. Little root coming through to the edge of the cup. And there's another one right down there. You see that? See that little root? It worked. I did nothing. All I did was I made some slices with the razor blade. Just a couple slices in different places. Just straight down. And then I went ahead and air layered it. And there it is. Roots. Now, I don't have a ton of roots here, like a lot of people show, because I took these guys late. A lot of times, if I took these air layers, if I did this earlier in the summer, like beginning of June, these things would just be, obviously, they'd be blowing up in here with roots right now, but I did these, I think it was like August, if I remember back, so it's getting pretty cool. Everything's really slowing down. Nothing's really growing anymore, but I've proven the theory. You don't, not only do you can you air layer these things without removing all the bark? You can remove half the bark and get the same results. You can also not remove any bark and just make some slits in there, man. Totally excited about that. I mean, unbelievable. Just unbelievable. So that's it for now, guys. We didn't have a lot of summer left, but we at least proved our theory, and I think this is gonna work out in the future for rhododendrons on my landscape or any other plant or tree that is hard to air layer and doesn't look so good after you've completely removed all the bark. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do, hit the like button. And if you wanna see how that fig is gonna turn out next spring, subscribe, hit the bell notification, get notified when the videos come out, guys. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.